So first looks, you'd probably be forgiven for thinking I am driving the latest C-Class estate, Mercedes C-Class estate, but you'd be totally wrong because this is the Genesis G70 shooting brake. This is the estate version of the G70 saloon that Genesis produce. Now Genesis are the luxury arm of Hyundai, also part of Kia Motors, a bit like uh, Toyota and Lexus, for example. So this is the luxury end, this is Genesis. And the shooting brake, well originally a shooting brake was a three-door estate car, but now it's more of a five-door estate car with a hatchback on the back and probably the emphasis being more on styling rather than functionality. But at the end of the day, this is a very functional estate car as you're gonna see later on in this review. I mean, it's distinctive. It's, it's very, it's got bags of curb appeal. It's got some lovely lines. You look at the front, it's, it's very Bentley-esque. You look at the back, it's very Porsche-esque. And then obviously from the sides and that, it's got that kind of, you know, Mercedes look about it. I mean, it's direct competition for the C-Class, obviously. It's also direct competition for the BMW 3 Series Touring and the Audi A4 Avant as well. So there's a lot in this premium segment that this car is having to compete with. But the first thing I noticed was how good the price was because this car starts from only 35,000 UK pounds on its entry level, which is simply phenomenal for what you actually get. Now, as I mentioned, there is a saloon version of this car as well, which we've also reviewed. And if you click up there now, you can have a look at that. But for now, this is the estate version, the shooting brake. So we're gonna take a look around it. We're gonna see what it's like in the back for the passengers, how big the boot is, what the engine configurations are, the gearboxes, literally everything. And then we're gonna give it a road test and we'll give you our opinion of the latest Genesis G70 shooting brake. My name's AJ and you are currently watching the player YouTube channel. And if you've never seen what we've done before, then feast your eyes for the next minute and a half on this. This is how a car should sound. Listen to this. I didn't really push it either. I was just done with it. Oh, really? So when it comes to choosing which G70 to go for, as in which trim level, there are three different choices. Your entry level car is called the premium line. Your middle range car is called luxury line. And your top of the range, or kitchen sink level as I like to call it, is called your sport line. When it comes to colors, you've got 15 different color choices. If you like solid white, that's absolutely fine. That's included in the price with any of the trim levels. However, if you like the metallics, such as this particular color, you're gonna be paying an extra 750 UK pounds. And if you like your matte metallics, the pearl colors, as Genesis like to call them, it's an extra 1,130 pounds. So do bear that in mind. However, I think some of the metallics are definitely worth paying that little bit extra. With premium level, premium line entry level cars, you do get a number of different bits and pieces, which I'm quite impressed with, to be honest. You get LED lights at the front, LED headlights. You get LED rear lights as well. You also get 18 inch rims, which I think look particularly good. And you get foldy any mirrors, that's good when you're parking and stuff like that, but they also come with blind spot detection. Additionally, there's a number of other bits inside. Let's check it out. 
So one good thing about Genesis is they load up their entry level cars with tech and lovely driver friendly bits and pieces. Unlike some of the other car manufacturers when you're buying in this sort of premium segment that will charge you extra for what I call basic and usable amenities. Things like keyless entry and keyless ignition, a 10.25 inch TFT touchscreen and digital cluster. They all come as standard with this car. You get dual zone air climate control, you get Android Android mirroring and you get Apple Play as well. However, on this particular car, it doesn't come as wireless. It only, you have to plug it in. You get cruise control and you get lovely electronically adjustable seats here at the front. You get an adjustable electronic steering column as well. Again, I can't begin to say, normally all of this will be at a premium cost, like a pack with the other manufacturers. With Genesis, all comes as standard. So let's check out what the engine and gearbox configurations are with the Genesis G70. Bonnet release catch is down here in the driver's footwell. It's a single pull, nice and easy. Uh, don't forget, if you're driving a hand drive version of this car, it's going to be in the passenger footwell. They're not going to swap it around, cost too much money. The actual bonnet catch itself, if you look at that beautiful Genesis badge, it's just to the right. So just slide your finger in and just pull it to the left like that and let the gas struts do the work. Really nice premium quality finish on this car, not just under the bonnet, all round. Okay, so there are two choices when it comes to your engine. You've got a two litre turbo powered four cylinder petrol engine and it will develop between 198 and 245 brake horsepower, dependent on what trim level you go for. So if you go for your entry level car, that's the premium, premium trim level, you can only get it as 198 brake horsepower. However, if you jump up to one of the other trim levels, it comes as 245 brake horsepower. Your other option is a 2.2 litre four cylinder diesel engine, like the one we've got here. It's a CRDI, it's whisper quiet, super engine. Um, again, that will develop around 200 brake horsepower. And to be honest with you, at the end of the day, if you're doing a lot of mileage, that's where it's gonna reflect a little bit. So if you've got doing more miles, this engine itself will give you between 41 and 45 to the gallon, whereas the petrol engine will only give you between 32 to 35 to the gallon. So you have to weigh up, you know, what you're actually gonna be using this car for. All cars are rear wheel drive and all cars come with a whisper quiet eight speed auto gearbox. So one of the best attributes of the G70, I feel, is its actual design. And round at the back here, it's reflected in the boot, which I think is simply stunning. Look at all this aero that's going on here. And there's way this lovely screen sort of wraps its way around. It's pinpoint all the way around here because it's one of those floaty screens. But I love the way it sort of goes around. It's, it's, it's curved, it's beautiful curved glass. All privacy glass around the back. Well, it is a premium line car, so you're gonna expect that. Love the spoiler at the back here as well, really nice. Um, unfortunately, I think where it's spoilt down the bottom here, I would have split these and had two pipes either side. I just think it feels it's a little bit offside, so to speak. But look at these split lights. How nice are they? Really lovely. Now, in order to open the boot, it's electronically assisted. There's a little button here on your wash wipe. So if you push that like that, it will lift up. So it is more of a hatchback. You know, we've discussed the styling of this car. This car is, is styled in a, as a five door hatchback. That's about the only way I can describe it. Inside here, you get 400 litres of boot space. It's not the biggest, but it's big enough. And that's all that matters because as we said, you know, using the word shooting brake, it now kind of represents something that's more form rather than function. That's the best way of doing it. You get the inevitable parcel shelf. I have no idea why or what this is actually going to be used for. It's just a nuisance, to be honest with you, because you can't put it underneath here. Um, you do get a lovely split on the seats as well. So you can get those seats down. Once they pop down, you've got nearly 1,600 litres of boot space. You will get a bicycle in there without taking the front wheel off. You will get a couple of Alsatian dogs in there. No problem. Well, we, if I say Alsatians, um, that's a better... Labradors, there you go, big Labradors. That's the only way I can say it. Big labs, yeah, that's probably the best way of describing them. Um, underneath here, there is an option to get yourself a spare wheel with this car, believe it or not. It's an extra 40 UK pounds. Genesis, seriously, you wanna charge 40 quid for a, for a spare wheel? Just give us the spare wheel for God's sake, what's the point? This folds right back like that. This particular car's got a pannier in here. Um, Genesis decided to hide the Genesis Bible. Look at this, this is the owner's manual. I mean, seriously? Seriously, guys, look at this. We could do away with this and not charge us the 40 quid. You know what I'm saying? Look, it's all in here. More books. Oh, look at this. Now that is a proper Bible. Look at that. 
nearly 400 pages. Waste of space and time, I'm sorry, it really is. That cost more than 40 pounds. Could give us a nice, you know, space saver, whatever we need in here. You've got the pannier in here. This particular car comes with the stupid tire inflator kit, you know, the puncture repair outfit. Again, throw it away. There's no point in even buying it, but at least this isn't in the glove box. I will say that. And then if you have the spare wheel, you're not gonna have the pannier, so you're gonna have to put that in the glove box, which kind of defeats the whole object. Um, nevertheless, it's, it's nicely done. It's very useful space as well. You've got the brushed aluminium here, so that's not gonna get scuffed and look horrible. Um, there is a little bit of a drop just inside there, so, and you will notice it's quite high for the load lift. So you're gonna be picking heavy stuff up. You're gonna have to get that bit higher to get it in. So perhaps not as you know, user-friendly as it's, as it's sort of made out. Now dropping those seats um, is quite easy. You can just reach over here at the back and they pop forward on their own. I'm gonna do it for you, I'll do both sides. And you get an idea, look at the space in there, absolutely mad. Um, you've got a 12 volt adapter over here. There aren't any shopping bag holders, but you've got a couple of granny's uh, fishnet stockings here to put stuff behind there. But all in all, it's a useful space. You're gonna be able to use this as an estate car, but not the biggest estate car. Best way of looking at it, really. So here in the back of the G70 for the passengers, there's not a lot of room. Um, they've even scalloped the seats out because of that. I can see how the design element has gone with this. Um, not a lot of attention has been paid to your rear passengers. And I would have thought this being a family car, there should have been a little bit more. For example, there's another thing I'm gonna show you. Here in the center, there's only one USB um, adapter. Now that's gonna cause problems if you've got two teenagers in the back here, they're gonna be arguing over who gets to charge up, you know, and when. So, and then another thing I've noticed, which I think is a bit of a faux pas on Genesis' behalf, is the ability for the passengers to adjust the front seat as you can see like that. Luckily, not the driver's seat because that could cause an accident, but that is just gonna cause a major argument because when kids get irritable or fed up or bored, how much fun are you gonna have pushing mum or dad backwards and forwards with that all the time? So I can see that's gonna cause a few problems. Again, we're in a premium segment car here. I would have expected tri-zone air climate control. I would have expected the ability to change the temperature in the back here, not just a couple of vents that you can turn the air on and off with. Um, so yeah, a few little bits and pieces I'm not so keen on in the back. Um, let's have a look around quickly. The actual finish, I mean, it's, it's a lovely finish. This is leatherette. There are two choices in your leatherette, if you like, in colors. Uh, so this isn't real leather. If you want Napa leather, it's part of another pack. We'll talk about packs later on. In the center here, you do get a double cup holder and a decent armrest. So I'll give it that. It's not gonna bother you when you put your arm on there and they are quite deep. And there's quite a nice finish to the whole feel of this. No ski hatch though. Again, you know, this type of car, I'd probably be taking the family. We'd be going for a long weekend skiing somewhere. I'd like somewhere I can put, you know, long lengths of wood or skis or whatever I want, but it doesn't exist in this car. Recessed seat belts, and you do get the obligatory Isofix points. However, these are quite classy. They're on a hinge pivot there, so they don't pop out. Kids are not gonna chew them, dogs are not gonna eat them up, um, and you're not gonna lose them either. All in all though, it's quite a nice space. It's just a bit tight and perhaps not as user-friendly as I would have expected. I love driving this car. It's just got a real lovely feel to it. The brakes feel good. The suspension is superb. The actual visibility, the, you know, the peripheral vision on this car, excellent. The reversing, you know, looking back through that large screen at the back there, it's, it's, it's really, really good. Whoever's designed this has spent a lot of time thinking about the driver. Um, a little bit in the back for the passengers, you know, when we did, when we talked about the space in the back, but I think at the end of the day, this is the type of car you're gonna buy if you've got a young family. So really, you're gonna have a couple of child seats in the back, you might, maybe a youngster in there that's, you know, a little bit smaller than a larger adult like myself when I was sitting in the back there. So I think that's where this car has kind of been geared towards. Um, if you go for the upgraded uh, pack with this car, the innovation pack, you're gonna get extra bits and pieces like the head-up display. You get a bigger cluster here, 12.3 digital cluster, which is really nice. You get a number of driving aids. Um, there's like the lane keeping, the distance control and things like that. That's, that's all over here on the right-hand side of the steering wheel. That's all it included in that pack. The pack is 3,250 UK pounds extra. Um, it includes some adaptive LED 
LED headlights as well, which I've got to say, they are absolutely brilliant at night. Once you put it into the auto mode, just by pushing your uh, main beam ahead and it will click in straight away. It's just really, really good. They're like those matrix lights that you get on some cars. Um, love, loving all those extra little bits. You get the wireless charger included that as well for your Apple device. So it's, they're just nice little extra bits and pieces. Speaking of extra bits and pieces, if you want heated front seats and a heated steering wheel, um, definitely worth investing for here in the UK because it does get cold during the winter here. Um, you're talking an extra 540 UK pounds. Again, I think it's worth it if you're buying the premium level car at around 35,000. It's worth just adding those bits in. I don't think there's an awful lot extra to pay. If you want the sunroof in, again, not a necessity, but nice in the summer if you want to turn the aircon off and you just want to have the window open because it is a fully retractable sunroof. It's an extra 940 UK pounds. So again, these are all bits and pieces down to you as an individual, what you fancy, you know, how you want to spec up your car. Now, another thing with this car, you do get drive modes with it. So there's different driving modes. We're currently, the mode button is down here, very simple to use. Um, it's got a knurled bit at the top there. So it's very, it's quite a nice knob to get your fingers around if you get my drift. Um, you can start, well, I've started this car in the eco mode, the economy mode. Um, you then got, if you turn it once, you go into comfort mode. Again, that softens up the dampers. You get a little bit more reaction to the pedal. Obviously in the eco mode, it's, it's a lot slower to build up in the revs it's taking its time um, it's still quite comfortable to drive but once you get in a comfort mode especially on a run you know I, I would stick with that if you're out on a motorway or a freeway wherever you're driving this car um, then you go into sport mode one more click sport mode the seat tightens up around you I can feel it hugging me a little bit tighter does that automatically and immediately you can hear the revs drop and the whole car starts to behave a little bit more responsive when you put your foot down you start to get a little bit more of that 2.2 litre diesel that we've got in this particular car really starting to give you the maximum brake horsepower that it's going to give you which is around 200 brake horsepower at the end of the day and then finally why I don't know but if you did want to take this car out on track and you want to turn off the traction control you can go into sport plus mode so there's four different modes I'm going to put it back into the economy mode sport plus obviously you're going to get the least economy out of the car but the the most bang for your buck when it comes to the acceleration the top speed in this car as well um all in all though a very very nice easy car to drive around um i'm loving the fact that it's a very practical car at the end of the day um and also it's a very very attractive car i've had numerous people come up to me especially when when i've been into a, a fueling station where i've been putting fuel in people come walking over and saying to me oh i really love the car what is it you know looking at it, oh it's a genesis never heard of them or some people have heard of them so all in all yeah genesis i think you've nailed it with the looks definitely you've nailed it with the drivability um you've nailed it with the price um so why wouldn't i go down and buy one well let's sum this car up and see what i do think of it So there you have it, our little review of the Genesis G70 shooting brake, or estate car as I like to call it. It's a good practical car, it's a good looking car, and additionally, Genesis really do look after you when it comes to the after products and the after sales of this car, because you get a five year unlimited mileage warranty. Yes, I did say unlimited mileage, which is absolutely incredible. On top of that, you will get five years free service plan. So they will look after this car for you for five years. And you will get a Genesis concierge assigned to you that will come and collect the car and leave you with a loan car while they go and service your car during that five year period. How fantastic is that? You've got 12 years anti-corrosion warranty. You've got three years paintwork warranty on this. And on top of that, you've got five years roadside assistance bit of a no-brainer in my books get down to your genesis showroom give one of these a test drive you are going to be pleasantly surprised whether you go for the petrol or the diesel choice is yours at the end of the day i love driving this car i've really enjoyed doing this review you've been watching me aj on the player youtube channel don't forget 
like, subscribe and comment. There's a comment box down below for a reason. If you've got any questions about this car or you think I've led you wrong in some way or you just want to add to the conversation, use the comment box. Don't forget, if you can give us a big thumbs up, I'd really appreciate it because we don't get a pay rise, we don't get a bonus or anything like that, but we do get a pat on the back from the boss to say, job well done, you've had X number of likes on that particular review last month. And that really does help, keeps me in a job at the end of the day. Um, if you wouldn't mind giving us a subscribe, there's a bell sign, you can leave that unchecked and at any time you will get an update on all the things we do. As you saw at the beginning of this video, we don't just do car reviews. There's stacks of other stuff that we're doing and you might actually like some of the other bits and pieces. You might find it entertaining or just purely interesting. So leave the bell sign unche unchecked and give, yourself, give us a little subscribe. In return for that, I want to give you guys something for nothing. Gratuit, free as they say in France, or whatever it is, whatever language you speak. Um, you can get a copy of the player. The player is a massive bookazine for guys, for us guys. And it's got everything, it's 220 pages of everything us guys love. There's cars in there, there's jet skis, there's boats, there's holidays, there's golf, there's food, there's interviews, so on and so on and so on. Now you can get the online version of that completely free of charge. Can't send you out the actual book because they cost 100 UK pounds each, but you can get the online version completely free of charge. Just head over to www.theplayer.co.uk. All you've got to do is put your name in and your email. Simple, isn't it? So head over there, it's coming up down there now. I'll leave it up for a few seconds while we finish up here. And just to say, thanks for watching guys. We'll be back next week with something hopefully as nice, as interesting, as beautiful looking as the Genesis G70. Catch you next week.